Terence Crawford defeats John Molina Jr. with an eighth round TKO. This was a routine defense, I guess you could say, for Terence Crawford. And you can forgive him for this level of opponent because he has been fighting very high level guys up until this point. His last fight obviously was against Victor Postal. That was for supremacy, 140 pounds, and he came through that with fly flying colors. So this fight here against Molina Jr., you know, a marking time fight, a stay busy fight, a gimme. So you can't really criticize it too much. Molina gave Terence Crawford more opportunities to land than Victor Postal did because Molina was obviously a lot more aggressive, as he had to be. He did get through of a few shots here and there on Crawford, but Crawford tended to be pulling away when the shots were thrown, so he took the sting out of him. We know Molina Jr. is a good puncher, but he never really landed his money shot on Terence Crawford. Crawford boxed well. He was counter-punching from the opening bell. He was moving more and more as the fight progressed. Early on, he was kind of standing his ground a little bit more, but as John Molina got more and more desperate and started applying more pressure, we saw more movement from Terence Crawford. But at the same time, he was still countering. And he was gradually wearing Molina Jr. down. It wasn't just the shots to the head, but also shots to the body, which were kind of taking their toll on John Molina Jr., then in the 8th round, he landed a series of shots, pinned Molina Jr. in a corner, opened up, and the ref jumped in. Some people may feel the stoppage was maybe a bit premature, but in light of some of the tragedies that have taken place in boxing recently, other people will disagree and say, nah, you know what, John Molina Jr. was never going to win the fight. He was well behind on the scorecards. He was getting hit with shots in virtually every round, clean punches. So why leave him in there to take more punishment? Why not pull him out? I know that boxing history is replete with examples of guys who hit lightning in a bottle. They were behind the whole fight. They were taking a beating. And then in the 12th round, they landed some stunning punch and won by knockout. That does happen, but you have to leverage that possibility against the possibility of a guy ending up with brain damage. And you make your decision, you take your pick. So it was what it was. It was a Good performance, I guess, from Terence Crawford. He handled John Molina Jr. Better, better than most. But what we really want to see now is Terence Crawford move up to 147 pounds. That's what we're all waiting for because he's established supremacy at 140. And if he wants to stay at 140, I've got no issue with it. Personally, because I've got no problem with somebody staying at one weight class their whole career if they so choose. But the majority of boxing fans out there will say, no. Nah, we want to see him test himself, and that means moving up to 147 and mixing with the likes of Keith Furman, Danny Garcia, Manny Pacquiao, Kel Brook, Errol Spence, Sean Porter, so on and so forth. Although there might be some people that would like to see Terence Crawford fight Adrian Broner at 140, that does have to be said, but I would say the majority of people want to see him at 147 and see what he can do there. If he does move up to 147, how do you think his skills are going to hold up. You would imagine they're going to hold up well because the guys at 147, they're skilled, but they're not crazy skilled. Terence Crawford is crazy skilled. But he does have this punch resistance, I don't want to say problem, but suspicion that may be exploited at 147 pounds more so than it was at 140 or 135. He was hurt by Yuriokis Gamboa. A lot of people are holding on to that fact. Gamboa, for all his flaws, is very fast. And I would say faster than anybody Terence Crawford is likely to encounter at 147. So will they even be able to catch Crawford and test that perhaps suspect chin? You never know. We'll see. His, uh, as I say, his uh, skill level is considerable. Is his power enough? to keep the guys at 147 honest. You let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to read uh, your comments. So yeah, let me know how you feel about the performance, who you'd like to see him fight next. Should he stay at 140? Should he move up to 147? And how do you think he would do against the top welterweights? All right, let me know. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.